Okay, so whenever they say that text two, or they where they ask me if text two, how it would respond to something about text one, I tend to read text two first. I know that I'm going to be missing some of the context, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather kind of get the idea that text two is trying to get across, and then and then kind of have that in mind as I'm reading text one. So let's see if that works here. Text two. In their destabilizing effect on literary form, the sermons in Morrison's works recall those in Ellison. So there's something similar between those two. And destabilizing is strong too, right? That, that sounds bad. Yet, yet, literature by Black Americans abounds in moments where interpolated speech erodes the division between oral and written forms that literature in English has traditionally observed. So that's a hard sentence, but eroding the division? I, I kind of understand that. Something that's normally separated is not separated anymore. I mean, that's kind of what I get. Uh, Morrison's use of sermons is attributable not only to the influence of Ellison, so influence of Ellison, but also to a community-wide strategy of resistance to externally imposed literary conventions. So, all right, I, the thing I notice in both cases here is there's a but, right? They're saying that there's an effect, there's a, some sort of influence, right? Uh, but then there's this other thing, right? So the buts are always the most important words in these passages. So uh, they know, they stand out to me, but I don't have a great sense about this, what this is about. Not because I don't have the context, but because the, the phrasing of this passage is so difficult. So that's okay. Let's go to text one and see what we get from there. Uh, text one, like the work of Ralph Ellison before her, Toni Morrison's novels feature scenes in which characters deliver sermons of such length and verbal dexterity that for a time, the text exchanges the formal parameters of fiction for those of oral literature. So another confusing sentence, but like the work of Ellison before her, Toni Morrison's novels, right? Again, they're hitting this idea of that there's a similarity, there's a copying here, there's an influence. So that idea is at least the same. Given the many other echoes of Ellison, echoes of Ellison, in Morrison's novels, both in structure and prose style, these scenes suggest Ellison's direct influence on Morrison. I mean, passage one is, is just saying uh, Ellison influenced Morrison. Text two seems to be saying that, uh, but with a but involved. So I don't understand the but, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be important. So my summary here, my dumb summary, is as dumb as it can be, is that text two is going to say about text one, yes, there's influence, but there's also something else. I don't understand the something else. Hopefully the choices will help me understand it. But honestly, the but is more important here than anything else. So, so let's take a look. Uh, a, as failing to consider Ellison's and Morrison's equivalent uses of the sermon within the wider cultural context in which they wrote. Equivalent is a word that scares me. It's a bit of a quantifier. It's saying two things are equal. Are they truly equal? I, I don't know. They did say that they were similar to each other. So maybe that's enough. But uh, failing is pretty strong. That means you're missing something. Um, is the something the wider cultural context? I don't know. It did talk about black Americans abounding in moments uh, or literature by them abounding in moments. That's maybe broader. There's something about traditions and conventions. I, I don't know. I, I still don't understand it. So I can't eliminate A. I don't understand it enough to get rid of it or to pick it. Uh, but let's let's take a look at B and see what we get there. Uh, as misunderstanding the function of sermons in novels by black American writers other than Ellison and Morrison. Well, they did talk about Ellison. They did talk about Morrison. But this choice has just got the wrong main character. It's shifting us away from both of those people to other people. And yeah, passage two is kind of talking about literature by black Americans more generally, but it doesn't seem like that's the person's main point. Generally speaking, a word like other is a strong word that usually indicates traps because it's taking us out of whatever the topic is in the passage and, and talking about something other than what the passage was talking about. So I feel actually pretty confident getting rid of that choice. It just, it's just, it's not trying to get a broader point. It's really still about Morrison and Ellison. C, as disregarding points of structural and stylistic divergence between the works of Ellison and those of Morrison, no, the text two is still saying these two people are similar. And there is this word like division in text two, and this is a bit of a trap as well, but it's very specific to this passage. Uh, there's no division, or, or they're not talking about a division between Morrison and Ellison. They're talking about a division between oral and written forms of literature generally, right? So they're using the same synonyms uh, in choice C and in the passage, but they're using it in completely different contexts. So there is no divergence that I can see of between these two people Maybe that's what the but is, is, is that they're not perfectly equivalent. I don't know, but it's I can sense the trap here. They are definitely talking about the wrong kind of divergence, the wrong kind of division. This is wrong. 
D, uh, as being indebted to the tradition of resisting literary conventions that privilege written form, such as novels over sermons and other oral forms. This is, again, using a lot of words that I remember from the passage, but I don't quite understand them. So text two is saying the part about Ellison's influence on Morrison is indebted to the tradition of resisting literary conventions. Okay, a tradition of resisting convention? That seems like an odd thing. Uh, going back to the passage, I'm kind of just trying to understand this now. Um, yet literature by Black Americans abounds in moments where interpolated speech erodes the division between oral and written forms that literature in English has traditionally observed. Well, the traditional thing that they're going against, that they're resisting, is dividing, I guess, oral and written forms. Um, I don't think that they're privileging, meaning favoring, one form over another, they're just separating them out. So if anything, uh, this is a bit of a comparison word telling me to rank two things or that somehow these two things have been ranked in the past, but it doesn't say that in the passage. It doesn't say that um, one type of form is better than another. They just said that they were separate, right? So this is a key idea that the SAT does in all sorts of places is just because we say two things are different doesn't mean we're saying one thing is better or worse. Choice D is trying to make us think that they said one thing is better than another, and, and now they're resisting that ranking. But I don't think they, they did that ranking at all. I think it's just purely these were separated things. Um, so yeah, I just don't see this happening. Let me go back to A. Maybe I can try to understand that better. As failing to consider Ellison's and Morrison's equivalent uses, oh, I still hate that word though too, uh, of the sermon. So did they both use a sermon? Let's see. Yes, in their destabilizing effect on literary form, the Sermons and Morrison's works recall those in Ellison's. I don't love equivalent, but that, and I thought the word echo was in there somewhere too. Oh no, that was in passage one. Um, okay, so maybe that's okay. I don't know. Uh, within the wider cultural context in which they wrote. So are they talking about a wider cultural context? Let's focus on those buts, right? I said at the beginning, but is the most important word in the passage. Yet literature by black Americans abounds in moments where interpolated speech erodes the division between oral and written forms that literature in English is traditionally observed. So is that a wider cultural context of being, you know, black American literature? Maybe. Let's continue. Morrison's use of the sermon is attributable not only to the influence of Ellison, but also to a community wide. Oh, my God. There it is. Right. I didn't even think about that phrase before. Community-wide is like dead on for wider cultural context, right? A community-wide strategy of resistance. Yes, I feel much better about that now. So watch, like you know, you should maybe rewatch this video because it, it's it's got a lot of moments where I had no idea what was going on, and yet when I found that answer, it's in, it's done. I see it. It's proven. It's confident, right? So that's what it should feel like eventually at the end of a question. But uh, you have to acknowledge that along the way, it's going to feel sometimes like you don't know what you're doing. But notice that my way of finding out what and, and proving my answer was through the answer choices, right? I'm, I'm picking them apart. I'm looking at certain words. I'm like, ah, oh, is this an okay word? Is this an okay idea? Is there something in the passage that matches with this? And so by picking it apart, I can go back to that passage. And I don't necessarily understand entirely what's going on. But if I can find little pieces that match up, that's good. And there are traps that match up, right? I said before that idea of divergence matching with the idea of division was a trap. They, those are synonyms, but they're referring to completely different things in the choice versus the passage. So this is tricky. This is a hard question. The college board thinks this is hard. I think this is hard. This is a hard question, but it's a great example of, you know, you might not know what's going on until you get to the very end. And you've proven that answer and, and try to learn what that feeling is like, what it feels like to find the connection and prove the answer. Because even though I struggled, I would be absolutely sure that choice A is the right answer here. Uh, and I wouldn't have to bookmark this. I'd be able to move on to other questions on the test.